When I first started using hand planes, I got real frustrated really quickly because it just didn't seem to work right. Well, I learned how to adjust the hand plane for optimum performance, and I, I just kind of want to go through some of those adjustments with you right now. The first thing you'll want to do is check the tension on the lever cap. You want just enough pressure on the blade assembly so that you can still move it with the depth adjustment knob or the lateral adjustment. Uh, so you don't, wanna, you don't want that to be too tight. And you adjust that with the, the lever screw right here. So you can tighten that or loosen it as you need just to put just, just enough pressure on that to keep that blade assembly tight. So if we take that off and take the blade assembly out, I want you to take a look at how I have my cap iron set on my blade. I'm only about 30 seconds of an inch from the edge of the blade to the edge of the cap iron. So that's one important adjustment. And the reason is, as those shavings come up, you want that cap iron to start breaking those shavings immediately so that you get very little tear out and a smoother finish. The other thing I want to point out is that the, uh, the main iron assembly, the main iron is beveled down and the cap iron goes on the opposite side of the bevel. It's very easy to get confused on that and even today after 40 years of using hand planes sometimes I get it backwards and I put the, the iron assembly in backwards or upside down. So you just want to keep that in mind. The bevel is always down on a traditional style hand plane. Now, the other thing is you want to make sure that your blade is nice and sharp. And we can cover that in another video, but having a sharp blade is probably one of the most important things um, in adjusting your plane. So I'm going to set that aside for now. And then the frog assembly, the way I set my hand planes is I make the frog assembly, I adjust its forward and back position so that it's even with the back of the mouth. With the more modern uh, plane irons and cap iron assemblies, and I should also point out that this is a replacement uh, set because uh, the original plane irons on some of these planes are just a little too thin to operate properly and sometimes they'll chatter across the work surface instead of actually cutting. So I've, I've gone and purchased a cap iron and iron that's much thicker than the factory blade and it lends more stability at the cutting edge. So because I'm using a thicker iron assembly, I adjust my frog so that the surface of the frog is flush with the back of the mouth. And you do that with the the frog adjustment screw in the back of the plane. Finally, before you put the plane back together, you want to make sure that the lateral adjustment is operating smoothly. And you want to make sure that the depth adjustment knob is operating smoothly. Now sometimes I'll put a drop of oil on the threads or a drop of oil on the pivot point just to make sure that everything's working properly. Now, setting the iron back in the plane, remember, the bevel of the iron is down. So I'm gonna put that down like that. And I wanna make sure that the yoke on the adjustment mechanism for the depth engages this slot in the cap iron. And then the last thing you wanna check before you put the lever cap back on is make sure that your iron assembly is tight against the frog all the way down. Sometimes when you put these iron assemblies back in, uh, there's a gap somewhere and you, you want to make sure that that assembly is well seated. The final adjustment you need to make to your hand plane is the blade depth. Now one mistake that a lot of students that I've taught make is that the blade depth is way too deep. Now if I sight down the front of my plane, and turn the adjustment knob, I can barely see the tip of that blade poking through. Anything more than that is going to be too deep and you're going to be frustrated in trying to use your plane. So I'm going to adjust it so I could just barely see it and then I'm going to try it on a piece of wood.
And as I'm planing, I'm looking down into the mouth assembly to see if the, sh the shavings I'm taking are the full width of the plane iron. If they're not, you may need to adjust the lateral adjustment or the angle of the blade to make sure it's cutting flat all the way across. So once your plane is set up and adjusted just right and the iron is nice and sharp, you can get full width shavings that are so thin sometimes you can almost see through them. And that's the goal for a smoothing plane to get a glass smooth surface on your workpiece.